Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen, episode number 176. Yes, we titled this Steak versus Steak Band. Oh, man, it was an interesting day for crypto in general and, and sexes with Gary Ginsler putting down the hammer from the SEC on Kraken. Not only is Kraken having to stop their staking as a service program, they have to pay a $30 million fine to the SEC. So not only do they pay the, fun, the funds that they have to, they've been paying, because I haven't seen a single report come out of any ill user uh, from Kraken, other than Kraken being around for about 12 years, I think I saw in one document. Um, and so not someone, anyone else that, other than the SEC and a $30 million fine harvested on that. Gary Gensler put out a video today that looked like it took about a week worth of uh, video editing, and that is at my skill level. So probably who knows how many people he had working on it. Um, but uh, it feels like they put more time in their video than they did in their regulations. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about today. Uh, as we, This was a carryover conversation from yesterday of proof of work versus proof of stake and the issues that proof of stake can lead to. Um, we're going to go over both the complaint and the press release from the SEC. Um, and we are going to have some fun with that. I think, but it, I ask the huge amount of people that are here to like, share, and retweet what we're talking about. Um, Lissa, that's you right now. Uh, uh, so, yeah, and as we're going to go on a quick mute so we can send out some quick tweets and some DMs, and we will be right back. Um. Requested, sent. Get Phil in and, here. I want to hear his version of SEC and Kraken. I just want to hear what he has to say. I wonder who the. I wonder who was talking about this last night. Who was talking about this last night, Phil? I don't know. And a, a shout out to Rancid as well. I actually just left uh, Rancid Space. Uh, was holding a really amazing space with uh, a current politician and a future politician. So really uh, came in on the end of that. So shout out to Rancid. That that's uh, that's gonna uh, some amazing stuff might be coming out of that. So congrats on that. Um, but would love for you to come up on stage um, as we talk SEC Gary Gensler proof of work versus proof of stake. We have our proof of work guru in the house. Mr. Phil. I'm and, shorting the fuck out of Frax to zero. Oh my god. I hate you so much. It, it literally is just the smartest play right here, right now. It, it He wants to ban liquidity. Uh, he wants to ban LSDs. And what is Frax? It's an LSD platform. Like, even if it doesn't go to zero, it's still going to get a hit when people realize, oh shit. Like, I'm still waiting for that dip on it. Yep, rancid. Yo, what's up, man? Hey, dude, thank you for uh, for jumping in and supporting me in in this space. I really appreciate that. But, um, definitely, definitely. You know, um, you know, I would love you know in a little bit, you know, for you to sort of talk about your space and and what you how long you know it's been going on here. Taco Bites has been going on officially for 176 days now. Nice, nice. Yeah, you know. um, yeah, we we can get into that in a little bit. I, I, I didn't want to interrupt uh, the current conversation, but I heard, you're good. Go for I, it. I, well, I'm yeah. interested in what what you had to say. Um, 
I'm a bit a big advocate for um, hallucinogens and that, and it, it, it sparked my interest when you said LSD. <laughs> Liquidity stake derivatives. That not the good okay. kind, Ransom. Okay, I was like, wait a minute, yeah. what is he talking about? I had I just had Liquidity to... stake derivatives of what Mr. Gary fucking Ginsler was talking about today, and I was getting on a rampage last night saying how much I hate proof of stake, and that proof of stake is nothing more than just LSD these liquidity stake derivatives and they just give you fucking inflationary assets of worthless fucking tokens to get people to lock up their tokens and you have no idea what they're doing with their tokens. And then long behold today, Gary Ginsler comes out and says, Hey guys, we're going to ban this. So this is what's interesting though with that where, where they didn't pull anyone else other than cracking into this uh, Binance and uh, Coinbase, I've gone through all of my account stuff with them. They haven't stopped anything with that. And so one of the biggest things I might think it leads to, and the great video that Gary put together where he spelled the word stake so many times, you know, um, I think he was misspelling it, and that's where the video came out from. He's like, uh, but, um, yeah, it's, um, I think what he, where he was trying to get into was the fine print. And I think that might've been where Kraken's fault lied. Do you know who owns a fair bit of Kraken? Who owns a fair bit of Kraken, Phil? Roger Veer. Shocking. And do you know how much Roger Veer hates the U S government and the SEC? How much? Enough to piss them off enough for this to happen. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he was, I know he was a, a, a big uh, Bitcoin man. Um, and part of, promote, definitely promotes Bitcoin cash. Yeah. Roger it's the better a- variant of Bitcoin. <laughs> Go for it. Sorry, sorry about that. What did you say, Rancid? Oh, no, sorry. To, I, I interrupted him in, in what are you saying. I just was apologizing. You're good. You're good. I don't need to speak. My bad. But yeah, no, Roger Veer's a, a big name in the, in the space. He's got a, a, lot, a lot of money. Yep. No, uh, one of the funniest things that Roger Veer did um, was uh, denounce his U- US, U.S. citizenship and get then get denied access to different countries. I remember that was being a thing for for a thing. I don't remember when uh let me see. Actually let me go wiki him real quick. I didn't I Hey didn't List, where's that. your husband? Hilarious actually kind of like... he's he's in the gym right now. Uh, like we just went to the gym and I did thirty minutes and he's still fucking going. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good. Ah, so he Liz, uh, what did you get at it today? We're all fucked. That's what I got out of today. We're literally all fucked. We're if you're done. in rave and you're fine. Oh, well, no, of course I'm fine. Like, I'm proof of work. So, of course, it's going to be fine. But, like, yeah, it, I was like, why? It's just a step backward. Like, it really is, in my opinion. But Explain, yeah. elaborate. Well, because, like, the end goal is to get mass adoption for crypto, right? Like, so. Like I said last night, I'm blockchain agnostic, so, like, it doesn't matter what blockchain, like, I just want the technology to move forward, and, like, with him cracking down on this now, it's like, fuck, now what? Like, now we move, you know, 12 steps forward, and we go five back, so that's that's how I feel, but. <laughs> Fair enough. Taco? So. So, uh, you know, as always, it's one of those things where, if anything, this drives more people to DeFi and this drives, you know, as I talked about about uh, a little bit about it today, uh, this is just going to run companies offshores. This is going to not allow, you know, people will take off geofencing and 
you know, hell, if anything, people will not want to work with people who allow people from the U.S. because uh, to prov- use their services. But, uh, you know, this literally makes money run off out of the United States. This may this makes brains run out of the United States and a brain drain. That's why Japan instituted regulation on crypto to become crypto friendly last year was because they were worried about the brain drain of their smartest people leaving the country. Um, and well, let's just make a haven for the smartest people. Um, and so that's sort of interesting, but doing a quick touch up on, on Roger Veer, there was a very hilarious incident where after he became and gave up his U S citizenship, he was denied entry back to the U S because he didn't give good enough ties of why he would leave and he would become an illegal immigrant. So that was sort of, that's sort of funny piece there, including a prison stint in 2002 to 2003 for selling firecrackers on eBay when they had a guns and ammo section, violating that. So he is a interesting fellow uh, to read those little details, but I do remember him doing that one piece. And so uh, interesting facts. Um, I, man, it's one of those things where, I don't know, uh, if it lays the groundwork for the U.S. to start making regulation rather than um, not making regulation and just uh, penalizing people, then we just become a prison state. And we already are. And so this falls in line with that. And what more can we do? I I kind of feel like it's their way of kind of forcing the CBDC down our throat almost. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to turn to wherever they're going to give it to us. DeFi and... is not real. In... Oops, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> DeFi is not real innovation. Like, it's, Stand it's on that, literally though. nothing. It's just playing with money. Like, there's so much more to the technology side than DeFi. Like you're just playing with different forms of money and how you can balance this and do whatever. Like it just, it's not real advancement for technology. Like there's other algorithms out there that are actually creating shit. It's it just DeFi is just not, it, it's not our main focus. It shouldn't be. So then, you know, you know how much I am a proponent of infrastructure on blockchain. Um, where do you think that the the focus should be? There's a lot of stuff to still build, man. Like the actual network infrastructure. Look at Cardano's roadmap. I mean, everyone always shits on Cardano, but they have like the best proof of stake model. I mean, you get to stake your coins and still have it in your wallet and still maintain possession of it. There's a lot more. Yeah, emphasis- no, uh, it was it was sort of hilarious. Uh, someone that you know how how the how feeds sort of like randomized tweets and stuff like that, and you sort of you know when you have two funny tweets that sort of. Um, they they showed me uh, what they had based off of uh, Richard Hart talking about not your keys, not your crypto, followed by uh, Charles Hoskinson uh, talking about the regulation of different sides and like the different aspects of DeFi staking versus, you know, custody staking. At the end, you're just support, you're working to support the network if it's, you know, where they where he tried to, where Gary Gensler really tried to push was whether or not was actually being staked or if it was being used for something else and that not being either defined or clearly stated. So there could be a foul play, not a foul play, but there could be, you know, someone didn't cross their T's and mind and dot their I's, um, you know, or like, you know, we've sort of thought uh, for a while is that it's been, uh, a larger, larger play at peace on the implementation of CPs and moving forward with, you know, uh, U.S. blockchain infrastructure 
you know, what happens if the U.S. then offers staking? It's different when the U.S. offers it because they are a big cartel dog. Like, at the end of the day, like, DeFi does pose a threat to the U.S. financial system because it's a different formation of money and how you can play with it and you're able to make more yield and yada, yada, yada. But, like, how many people have gotten wrecked over it? Like, how many people have lost a lot because of DeFi? Uh, we would then say the same about gambling, drugs, stock market, buying houses, buying cars, buying anything. Dog. You know, it sucks to say. Cars gambling did not lose $60 billion in Luna. How much was the market cap of Celsius? How much was the market cap of Voyager? How much was so the market cap of FTX? That's when people are playing with other people's money. And that's what he, he wants to get rid of. Yes. So then do you think then he's, he's a more, then do you think he's a proponent then of DeFi, of self custody over of sexes versus dexes? He's Is, definitely a proponent of self custody. Okay. I so mean, do you he think even stated in his things, he even stated in his things. Hey, not your keys, not your crypto. He did. He did say that. Uh, I I almost took it though as, as tongue in cheek when he when I when I listened to him say that. So I'll have to listen to him say, to that video again if I can get over how many times he says the word steak. That's almost a drinking game, uh, and I don't even drink, so I'll have to do like cans of Red Bull or something. But. Um, to, and take that with another perspective, but going over what the uh, SEC filing itself, what the complaint was, um, it, it was very loosey goosey in my opinion on, on, on its claims. Phil, I, I think you, you might've had a chance to read the complaint. I didn't actually read the complaint. I just watched the video and I was just like, all right, that's enough. I mean, okay. I, I just know that proof proof of stake. Okay, proof of stake that is LSD derivative. Their whole claim to fame is just manipulating money, like Lido, like staked ETH, like that shit. It's literally just playing with people's money and giving them yield back. Like, there's no other value to their ecosystem but playing with money. Like, they're not building real fire. They're not building technology companies and they're not building anything for mass adoption like you know what really will help mass adoption not DeFi. DeFi is just money markets and just playing with it what's going to help for mass adoption is things like solana launching a fucking cell phone getting people active into it like that's what's going to help producing real value for the community not extracting value and that's what a lot of DeFi is i mean dude i i hear people all the time they're like DeFi is the wild west you don't know if you're getting scammed this that the other like everything is something finance hoge fa finance um taco finance pussy power finance like everything is something finance there's no regulation on what is actually deemable in this space i mean you can fake something so easy in this space and there's no regulation whatsoever on what truly is DeFi. and you know what i have absolutely no problem if bank of america or wells fargo says hey if you want to stake with us, we'll give you 7%. Well, at least then I know it's Bank of America and they're not going to be able to scam me like Hoge Finance or Pussy Power Finance, you know? Like, and you know what? There is a part of me that says he's banning parts of DeFi for his banker buddies to then swoop in and come in. And you know what? That's just how governments work, dog. Like, they do that shit on purpose. It's a big boys game. They're a fucking cartel. It's just how it is. Tell me how you really feel. Branson. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, no, I mean, I think he, he has some valid points. And I think a lot of people are in the same boat, right? Like if, if it's Bank of America and you've got a brand and, and a reputation, right? Like, um, then you, you're going to have a lot more people um, on your side. Sorry, I, I did miss part of that. I had a friend swing by really fast, but uh, 
if I missed the first part of it, but. So no, it's, it's the, the aspect of big money versus little money. I, I think, uh, Phil, would you say that that is a absolutely valid point, a clean statement there? So it's one of those things to where we even see, uh, you know, I'm looking at some of the investment in returns and stuff like that. And it looks like, you know, 2019 was the earliest token that they started launching that they had staking for. And that was Tezos. Um, I remember that. With, yeah. You know, and that, inc- and, you know, so their list of tokens that they were uh, offering the service for was Cardano, Algorand, Cosmos, Polkadot, ETH, uh, Flow, Kava, Kusama, Luna, Mina, Secret, uh, Solana, Tron, uh, Tezos, and Polygon. And so those were the supported assets for U.S. investors. But then they did want to make a very big, they made a very clean statement that um, to all U.S. residents except for New York and Washington State. So... Uh, the question is, you know, if, you know, I know New York has its own backwaters issue. Um, and so uh, they're saying that 45 million was attributed to U.S. investors. Um, and of the of that 45 million, 14, you know, of so four, 45 million was staked by U.S. investors and 14 million was paid back to those U.S. investors. So, oh wow. I'm my question on that too is like that's it's a 25% return for U.S. investors. I, I um, you know, that's uh, slightly over, but I'm you know where I, I where this is where I have issue with it 100%. Like, and Phil, this is where you know, you and I diverge a little bit. I believe in the, in the concept of proof of stake. I believe in, in it, in its power and supporting networks when I feel that maybe it would be cool. It, uh, there's no way to do like geo fencing on, on staking protocols, you know, on how close like heli- like helium miners could only be the closest for them to work was like a thousand feet. You could try to like stretch that to like 800 feet sometimes if they were like at different heights, you know, they could, you could, they could still provide coverage, but like um, no, no total amount, you know, a total amount of certain amount could be, but then, then Coinbase or someone else would just open up servers in different parts of the world, server farms to provide that service. And so they wouldn't be staked in the same place. Um, but still have the same result. Um, and so what I see on that is how does that actually hurt anyone? If $45 million was staked by U.S. customers and $14 million was out to U.S. customers? Well, well, I think well, – here, here's what so I guess I'm a little unclear on is did they get what they initially – put into staking back on top of, of those returns? Or, or yes. A bit long. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So, so that's pretty good. I mean, that's what that's saying. It's, it's, net income, okay. t- income on top of the staking program is 14.95 million. So they earned 147 million uh, total uh, through the entire program worldwide with 45.2 million attributed to U S investors um, uh, net income attributed to U.S. investors in a staking port program, fourteen point nine five. So, I, I, where, I, I, it's one of those things where they're trying to say that the program that was offered is sold as a security, but it's also one of those things to where, in a, in a true staking platform, you don't necessarily know if your validator your node your your piece of the pie is going to be the solver and going to get those block rewards so does it really come down to p's and q's or is there more more to it than that 
I, I mean, isn't that essentially what they what they do? Uh, like, say, say you use a broker, right? And you give them a uh, hundred grand. Like, you don't. It's a risk, right? You're taking a risk, but uh, you don't know mm-hmm. what it is that they're doing with the money, and and there is the risk of not making any money as well. So how does and there, kind of, there's how risk does of loss different from what is our, yeah there's a huge risk I mean you you're putting everything you're gambling essentially right like it's, it's, it's a long term investment that you you believe is going to get pay off so but what how is that any different than like I guess what they're doing already in traditional markets there's no FDIC insurance for it because they don't allow for it to happen. Right, right. Would, would be my only only long-term guess on that. And so if the FDIC can't collect insurance, pay, won't collect insurance and payments on it, you can't. But it's one of those things to where, you know, I talked about this the other day. Um, um, we're using Web2 tools to market to track markets you know that are open 24 7 right now you know traditional market modeling is based off of monday through friday 9 30 to 4 closed on weekends and holidays um, now we're using those same tools for market analysis for markets that are literally influenced by a picture of a dog in a santa hat um, and so what does it have to do with it being a security? It does. I, I don't by the fact that it, if, if they're defending it as a security, then why don't they allow it to be insured? So I have a, a quick question, just something that, that popped up. Uh, so when Bernie Madoff uh, had screwed everybody out of, out of all that money, did FDIC uh, show up and, and, and recoup everybody's losses? No. Exactly. So why does the FDIC insurance really even matter then? Because there's a lot of people that their whole lives were completely changed and ripped apart because of what he did, and they got fucked. It only helps the small people that are under 250k like the the normal working middle class and the poor um they treat it as a game that if you had more than 250,000 you were able to accumulate a large amount of wealth and well it's kind of up to you to make those funds oh, okay i see i see i see okay it's like yeah, oh so well, sorry you put 10 million dollars in it your loss it's you got the 10 million somehow you can recoup that yeah, funds yeah. gg yeah, yeah. It's not so as long as you get something out at some point. Yeah, I mean, the whole my brother was was staking uh, ETH on on BlockFi, and I told him for months and months to get it out. And he's like, "Well, I won't be able to stake it." And I was like, "Well, it doesn't fucking matter, dude. Like, just secure your your investment, right?" Um, but and he didn't. And then when everything happened with the whole SBF thing, uh, he ended up losing about thirty, close to thirty thousand, maybe it was thirty five. Yeah, so it's – oh, go ahead, Phil. Do you know what this also means, though, for him getting rid of staking on, like, the LSDs and, like, the centralized exchanges? What's that? It's going to be a slippery slope. It's like like saying we need to ban – uh, semi-automatic assault rifles. Well, technically, every long gun that's not a bolt action is a semi-automatic. Like, my FAL, my SCAR, my fucking pistols, they're all semi-automatic as well. When they say we're going to ban proof of stake and staking, well, how do new coins and proof of stake come about? Okay, okay. So with the whole uh, banning staking, okay, I, I see where you're going. To. I didn't even think about that, actually. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw this. Stake, wow. So what, what do you think that that means? I think, my two cents, my crazy fucking thoughts, I think everything that's proof of stake is about to get fucking slaughtered. 
Mm. You know, what's really interesting, um, something that I've been, it ha- like I've had some issues with recently, uh, and that's the ENS DAO. I don't know if you guys are, are aware of ENS, but it's the dot ETH, right? At the end of your name. So like rancid16.eth or trigger.eth. Um, you can send payments, you can build a website, and it all resolves to your wallet, right? Oh. If, if Rancid, I, I ended up putting Taco at the front of my name because my full, my, my Christian name, as I like to say, is player1taco.eth. But everyone would just see Playa or, or call me Pla um, and so, rather than just calling me Taco. So um, I just moved Taco to the front. So, yes, uh, I've been ENS for a long part. Okay. Uh, I remember the Bartley situation is the last major Brent, thing with the Bratley. Bratley. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I want to call him. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on now? Uh, it's a fucking mess, man. Um, so they. You know, they've got their, the governance token, right? That only, like, not even 10 people own enough of the governance token to actually have their vote matter, right? So, and it's all just essentially people scratching each other's back. It's just like, it seems like a group of friends at, at this point. Um, so they had a, a bill to to sell 10,000 Ethereum into USDC. Which the first thing I thought was, why in the fuck would you do that when ETH is like less than two grand when you could have done that when it was at four to forty five hundred bucks and it wouldn't be an issue at all? Um, but it, I'm just kind of like putting the pieces together. Like, why would you want to drop ten thousand Ethereum? Like, they're making quite a bit of money, um, but they put they pushed it through, uh, and I don't think anybody even knew it was official or, or done until after it was already official and done. And then they allocated 200000 to picking up um, primary domains that had been sent to ENS Ferry, such as like Google.com or Amazon.com, like big, big names like that, which essentially keeps people like you and I from being able to purchase names like that um, when if they're in ENS Ferry, they could simply just pay $5.00 a year and, and extend them out like five to 10 years and revisit it later down the road. But with the whole proof of stake thing coming up and anti-staking in the U S like it, it, it kind of makes, I don't know, it, it kind of, uh, it's convenient. I'll just say that, that makes me wonder. Yeah, no, um, I've seen that done before. Like, you know, heck I, I even, you know, I pick up name services whenever I can and whenever I think of it um, uh, across many different uh, networks, you know, um, just for the simple fact, like uh, I found, I found Red Bull AVAX free. So I, I snatched that one up. Um, I, I feel that that's, there's a two part to that, you know, one so that they can be given to those companies they're you know but uh, you know and can't be held ransom but it's also it's yeah, like but, i planted my play here first i i own that yeah well and here's the thing though too is is like we're, we're specifically talking about names that are in ens ferry which is a vault right so you can send a name into this vault that you have an intention to to give to a certain company or a, a certain someone right and it stays locked in that vault until that person comes to retrieve it and then, then they can get it. It's not held for ransom. It's not, you know, a trade, it's not any crazy amount of money. It's simply just locked. And you can extend those names for as long as you want. But as soon as they expire, then they're up for grabs. You yep. know, so it's like, well, why even let them expire when it's $5 a year to, to, to extend them out versus pulling 200 k specifically to pick up names that are on premium at a higher rate than what you or I can afford you know, and what do you think that they're going to do? Like, it seems like those names are pretty safe in the vault, but once they're in somebody's wallet, like, what the fuck do you think they're going to do with it? They're going to use that shit and they're going to sell it for millions and billions of dollars. In my and, opinion. But, and well, then the question is, do they then, what, uh, I, I did not see this Dow vote. I missed it. I apologize. Um, you know, and I, I have what, five votes and I, I delegated three of them to someone I trust. Um, 
that hopefully would delegate either use them or delegate them to someone else. Um, but you know, was there a proposal to create that money to then be able to put it back into the trust or so was it? Here's, here's the thing is that's the fucked up thing. So they'll be purchasing it off of premium. Who gets the money for premium? The Dow, right? Yeah. So the Dow is pulling 200,000 to recycle it back into their pockets and, and acquire these names essentially. Okay. Right. Um, and then so back into the it goes back into the Dow tre- it goes back into the Dow Treasury, so it is a recycling process. But it's so it's okay. I can see that if if they're then voted to be sold and approved to be sold, you know, yeah, they're not. And so they're not though. That's the whole thing. Is they're they're saying that they're doing it because uh, domain squatters and and how we should, and even Nick Daeth had gotten on it and said, like, that we were all squatting on people's domains and this and this and that. And it's just kind of a mess. It makes them look really silly and stupid. Like, with the amount of money that they have, they, they can easily have a marketing team, you know? Um, and and they, like, I don't think he should be online saying stuff like he, he, he typed out a, a racial slur with a couple of, of stars in, in the middle of it. Uh, I, it just looks really doesn't look good. Yeah, I just you know um, ENS in and of itself I think is is a, an aspect of wallet secure is this like a step one of wallet transaction security. Um, you know the fact yeah, that they well, wanted to move it to to USDC. Uh, you know I thought that the story was going you know, who was, who was used for the OTC of that, you know, um, just because I have my own feelings towards circle being ran by BlackRock. Um, and the fact that I am like living eight blocks away from BlackRock's headquarters in New York, you know, it's, it's always, it's always a fun thing of, do I just go say I would like have an interview with Dan Scheel at like 8am and go up there? Or not? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's all just a a little bit crazy. And and then you have people like uh, like Gary um, Gary Palmer Jr., who a lot of people trust and and look up to in the space, right? But a lot of people delegated their votes towards him, and uh, when it came time for the vote, he delegated his vote to somebody else in the Dow. Yeah, uh, I I remember with the you know there's so like uh, what I wish would happen would be, um, and I don't I have I do not have enough votes to make a proposal, but uh, you know I w- wish that there would be a proposal put in place of, um, you know one of the things that I I, I do with some of the DAOs that I work with is on delegation after vote. So basically, um, a pro, you know, one vote, one delegation type of thing. Because what I've also seen is that a bunch of people, for whatever reasons, won't vote. Either they miss the vote deadline, or you know, they abstaining. I, you know, you know, I, I think yeah. it's. I think a lot of people just don't think that their vote's going to matter. To be honest, yeah. a lot of people probably don't care, don't pay attention to it. It's just a money play. But I think it comes down to a lot of people just don't really think it matters because the Dow has kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's like if you say something wrong and you piss them off and you, you, you're getting blocked or you're getting like treated shittily, you know. I don't know. It's yeah. just interesting to see how it all plays out and it makes me wonder like, it, I mean, it makes me think about it, I guess, anyway. Like who can't be bought? Yeah. Like who? You know, it doesn't matter if you have a DAO. I mean, we're just setting up another corrupt government and giving them power over us, right? Like we've done yep. this so many times. <laughs> Repeatable, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's. Uh, huh. um, it's hard. But one of the things that, you know, 
I don't know. Lisa, what are, what are your thoughts on this? Does Raven have an, a naming service? Does Raven what? Does Raven, Raven uh, have a naming service? No, not that. Like, like uh, well, if you buy, you can buy your your uh, name or whatever. So, like, I have a name on the Block Explorer. It's 500 Raven. You, but you buy that through, like, Core Wallet, and you create a main asset. Okay. And so, is, so it, is it, like, DNS? Nope. No. So, like, once you buy it, it's yours forever, and you can make up to 21 billion coins. So it's like a token. It's like your own token. Really? I know some people that made some pretty good money off of mining Raven, Raven coin um, at one point. But yeah, I mean, everybody's kind of launching their own their own naming service. But I'll have to look into to Raven coin, though. Raven is always a fun thing. Um, uh-huh. I just sent you a follow. That was the smartest follow you've done all day, Rancid. <laughs> Are you sure? Have you been tracking my movements? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Lissa, Lissa, I'm gonna I'm gonna you you I make you throw your pedigree out there all the time. Tell the world who you are. <laughs> Thank you, Taco. I appreciate you. So say who you are, Lisa, and what you own. And I think I heard Xander in the background too. So tell him I say hi. But tell tell hey, Rancid hey. about this. Hey, Xander. Lisa, Xander, t- tell Rancid about what you guys do for Raven. Uh, so I'm the chief marketing officer for Just NFTs LLC. Um, so we are an NFT resource provider. We own uh, three marketplaces. Um, we also own a marketplace on Ethereum Classic, and we own a marketplace on um, Evermore, the Evermore blockchain, um, where you've also teamed up with Meowcoin. Um, to create a, an NFT marketplace for Meowcoin specifically. Um, our marketplace, Ravenist, is comparable to OpenSea, um, but our customer service is, like, super superior. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. We're a very small team. It's literally only three of us. Um, and then uh, Xander can tell you what he does. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, basically, I uh, I'm the chief technical officer at Renewal Blocks LLC, which is a uh, Bitcoin mining company, renewable u- utilizing renewable energy, solar power, and and such. Um, also, I'm also the head of mining for Zeno Mining, um, which is uh, it, uh on the Ethereum blockchain. It's a uh, mining slash PFP project, um, part of the dog face NFT um, brand. So I'm, I'm working in those two projects, and I'm also a miner. Um, I, I have my own mining farm, my own mining, uh, ASICs, my own GPU mining equipment, my own CPU miners, and stuff like that. So that's what I do. And Renewal Box is actually becoming a security on the Ravencoin blockchain, so it's building on Ravencoin. That's correct. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty awesome. Um, I'd love to talk to you guys more about this and 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 have you on my show um, sometime. I, I do it on Thursdays at six p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely definitely interested to know more. I definitely have been paying attention to some of these other blockchains and and their naming services and stuff and uh not that i'm like only a uh, domain guy right like I, I do this full time so whatever it takes to put to put money on the table right uh or to put food on the table and, and bring money in um but uh 
But yeah, it's just a lot of the stuff that's going on with the guy has got me kind of uh, sitting a little bit uneasy. I know that ICANN currently owns .eth, or they, they're holding .eth for Ethiopia. So I don't believe it's available for purchase at this point. Uh, I know that the DAO is or has mentioned um, that they are going to be looking into that or, or speaking with um, with ICANN on this issue to try and come to an agreement with Ethiopia to be able to to own .eth. But it, like I mean, the technology is there behind it, so. I'm not super worried about it, but it's just something that's like, man, do they come knocking at, at the door at, at some point? You know, like say Ethiopia says no, and then they acquire it and, and then come back and nobody can use this .eth or I don't know how exactly that would work. So I'm not sure with that on piece with ICANN holding that. I don't know if they're going to be holding that hostage, but that's where one piece on the domain side of things. I know you can do domains, uh, you know, your .ens, uh, uh, .eth forward slash limo, I think, for ownership pieces of that. Yeah. Um, no, it's not. Or it's just dot. It's like yeah, it's dot, like dot, dot, dot limo. Yeah. Um, and I know there, you know, I have a couple of friends over in Cosmos who – I like a little bit of what Unstoppable Domains is doing, but they, you know, Cosmos, you know, uh, ecosystem really believes more in the decentralization part and, and they're sort of super anti. Um, 100%. Yeah. Unstoppable Domains. I know Sandy Carter, so I, I like, I respect her, you know, and, and what she's trying to do. And I think that it, un, Unstoppable Domains, it will do a really good job on bringing people into Web3. It's one of those things where, do we work to get as many people here as possible and then, and let the cards fly, lie where the cards lie, or do we try to do it right from the get go? But at the same time, if we're trying to have people do it right from the get go, um, I didn't get to go to, um, La Sa La um, Switzerland when they had the Cardano event there, but mm -hmm. I was at CNFT. Um, and we have, you know, projects talk, talking, you know, not talk, this isn't bad, but this is just cold facts. We have a bunch of 20 year olds talking about bootstrapping a stable coin. And so the question of, of the being able to fund behind it, you know, brings a little fear to something like that. When we have stuff like that being built, I'm sure it'll be really, really cool. I don't think it will go anywhere, but it's still freaking awesome. And the groundwork that we're laying is what, the big Titans will build off of. And so are we at a point to where we just work to position ourselves to be able to make the next play or what change, how do we make change now? I mean, that's, that's the big, the big question, right? Like, so I started uh, picking up um, ENS domains in 2017. And at the same time I was, pick I started picking up uh, at unstoppable domains at the same time, so I have, I have a ton of unstoppable domains, but none of them have ever gone anywhere for me up to this point, at least. But I, and I haven't, I mean, to be fair, like I haven't uh, tried very hard, hard to push them. But um, I've noticed that a lot more companies are, um, like I, I was in contact with a, a tattoo company that accepts crypto in Vegas, and I have their .eth name. I had reached out to them to work something out. And, and, and I, I was just offering to give them the, the name and if they hired me to come out and get them all set up on it and, 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 and all that. Right. And basically, basically for, for keeping out, you know, picking it up and holding it and keeping it safe for them, you know, like uh, the people are going to have to pay me for, for, for my time and my cost. Right. That's the way I look at it. Like I'm fine giving a company their, their name, but they're going to pay me, for keeping it out of bad actors' hands, they're going to pay me for the time that I've, I've held it and where other people could have picked it up and, and been using that against their company, against their customers, you know, to rip them off. So the way I, I see it is I'm working myself into like a new career. But um, I do think that we need 
some type of a bridge, right? Like something to bridge the gap and, and maybe unstoppable is that thing. It's kind of uh, seeming a little bit more and more that way, I guess, at this point to me, um, <clears throat> with everything going on with the Dow and all that. But uh, I do have some some questions around Unstoppable. Like I said, I do own quite a few of them. Um, but yeah, I think I think it is going to take some type of like something like that, right? Like to get because Unstoppable is, is uh, a Web two company, Web two basically almost everything with a, a, a light Web three blanket over it, right? Is essentially kind of what it is. It's no, but that's that, that's the way I see it, I guess. But I mean, if that gets the masses to be able to uh, to onboard more easily and get um, on the same page, then you know it is it is where it is. That everything everything has a, a time and a place. But but then you see like um, Patriots ETH, like New England Patriots picked up Patriots ETH for seventy five Ethereum a couple of months back you know, and had a pretty big partnership and we're seeing these patents and things that have been um, uh, issued to, uh, to Visa, MasterCard, Walmart has one uh, and it's, it's all for crypto and crypto points and rewards and, and stuff like that. If I'm not mistaken, but, um, but yeah, like a lot of these big companies are, uh, yeah, they've, they've already put some things into place, you know, but, they also have such big names, you know, they're not going to risk everything to, to go out on a limb and say, oh, we're, we're going to be the first crypto positive, blah, 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 when most people don't even know about crypto. So they're just setting themselves up. They're just getting in place for for game time, you know. I, I agree with you 100%. Like, uh, you know, I was at an event uh, two weeks ago, I think, uh, when I got back from Miami uh, that was – uh, no, I I am a delusional with time. Ten days ago, um, with Blue Dow, and it was held held at Mastercard building, and you know Mastercard is partnering with them for and then with their Mastercard Ventures for other Web three projects. So, um, you know these players are getting into into play, and you know and they're 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 stepping up. So, yeah, they're, they're yeah. definitely getting into position without a doubt. I mean, Mastercard and Visa both has patents on on uh, being able to hold NFTs and, and things like that within their on their cars, basically. You know, on your you know, they have that on your, your credit card and that. So yeah, and it's and it's cool to see that stuff come through. What I hate, you know, I'm glad they're taking their time with it, and they're like sort of, you know collecting all of their little pieces because that's you know they're putting forethought into it where where i hate seeing stuff fail is like my friend helped with uh national geographic and their launch and originally basically 30 days before their launch they completely changed uh changed uh chains going from Solana to Polygon and then making it a complete KYC piece um, and making them uh, soulbound NFTs as well um, because they didn't want their NFTs in the hands of people that um, uh, were in embargoed countries from the U S and so, you know, they had an opportunity. Nat Geo talks about the, Yet they only want to sell to a portion of it, which is sort of funny. I had, sorry, you you kind of cut out there at, at the last part that you said I missed part of that. Oh, I was saying that it's funny that Nat Geo covers the entire world, yet they only want to sell mm. to a part of it. Yeah, I mean, but that's all just like jumping through hoops, right? It, it's just scratching the right backs at the right times, you know, and and just covering your ass really like. If you have, if, if you're Mastercard, right? Like, think think about your name and reputation. Like, you're gonna have to do some things and make sure that, that everything's in place, you know. And also, 
you have plenty of money to be able to purchase those domains just in case um, to just cover your, cover your ass, you know. Um, and they, they make a lot of money, so. But yeah, I, it's just interesting. Yep. 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 Um, Phil, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, as, uh, as, as it goes, uh, any closing thoughts on that, Phil? No, that's all. Proof of stake still a scam. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at this point, there is no way they, they could, could ever go back to um, proof of work, right? Or, or is there? A- Doug, I couldn't hear you wrong. What'd you say? Is there any possibility that it, it, it could go back to proof of work? Or now that it, it's switched... What could go back to proof of work? Uh, like... You just said proof of stake is is a scam, so I'm just uh, just kind of piggybacking off what you were saying. So I don't know if you were speaking on like Ethereum or or what. I was saying in general, everything proof of stake is shit. So so if you if they turn if they've gone to proof of stake, could they then switch and go back to proof of work? Bro, you rugged. You rugged. I'm sorry. Uh, Phil, can you hear me? I can hear you. He like uh, dropped uh, no. a little. No, I, I I think it's your connection, Phil, because I I could hear Rancid. Uh, he was basically saying, uh, "Do you think then uh, the system would have a chance if it moved back to proof of work?" Rancid, was that basically Absolutely. what you were asking? Yeah, essentially, Fuck. like how, like what does that look like? It, like, say I'm a mine, I'm a, com- a company, like or say I'm Ethereum, and we switch to proof of proof of stake, uh, or, or go to proof of work. Can we switch back to proof of, of stake? So there's a lot of newer CPU coins. Um, I'm not going to name drop them. Oh, shit. Fuck. Are you still there? Kata? My thing just like got a crash. Okay. There's a lot of CPU mineable coins that are split networks where they utilize proof of stake and they also utilize proof of work. Um, proof of work for the security and the decentralization and proof of stake for the speed and for the scalability. Um, if they were to implement something like that, where they still utilized miners, it would just it would really just give me a little bit more safety. But Ethereum, at the end of the day, is a fucking lost cause. Like it, it, Ethereum has gone to the elites. Ethereum's code base is now immutable. It's it's not what it was, and it's not what it was promised. It's pretty much digital fiat now. Right, so so it's a uh, kind of a, a kind of like Bitcoin, then I guess in, in a way is what you're saying. If I'm understanding it correctly, like it's just there for for the value, right? And and uh, X amount of players hold X amount of it, and that's really kind of it. He rugged. Phil rubbed. He, yep. Yeah. So, uh, Lisa, your thoughts on this then? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I just want blockchain to succeed. I guess you could say. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I don't care in what form. Of course, I want it to be legal, but yeah, that's just, uh, I guess. Yeah. Phil, what were you saying? Or Rancid? Go ahead, Rancid. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to say, uh, like, don't you think that, I mean, obviously, so we have a monetary system when it comes to money, right? And everything's run a certain way, and it has been that way for so, so long, right? And um, whether it's manipulated, I mean, whatever, we can go on for days, right? But, but it, it is the way that it is, right? So they're already talking about switching to a digital dollar. Some countries have already like moved in this direction. Um, what do you guys think that looks like? Do you think that, that looks like a, a, a government like token or something like Matic on Polygon? Um, or I mean, I, I know, I know the XRP fanboys are, or uh, screen XRP from, from the tops of the hills. They haven't been for like the last five years. So. so here's what I per se on that issue. I 
I believe that the U- the CBDCs will be utilized for Social Security, welfare, and any other form of government-issued money. Instead of governments issuing the monies to the banks and the banks charging the government a fee, they're going to be able to streamline it and they're going to be able to save on giving that money out. They're also going to be able to track the payments. They've given everyone phones already. They were quote unquote Obama phones. That was the nickname for them. They've given out a lot of information and stuff already. So one thing with the Obama phones is what I'm going to call them. You don't actually own your data in that. And at any point in time, if a government official wanted to come in and see anything in your phone, they don't have to be present. They can just fucking remote in and they can check every note. They can check your camera roll. They can check every single thing on that phone because it's government property. So for them to instill a CBDC for welfare, social security, EBT, shit like that, that's actually going to be beneficial for them because now they also have control over your bank account and they'll be able to see exactly what's going on. Whether it's ran on Ethereum, Polygon, Dogecoin, I have no idea. And that's really up for grabs. But right here, right now, I don't even think it would be ran on a blockchain. It could easily be ran on their privatized servers, like how they have the Fed now coin, and it's 100% retractable. It's not like they need blockchain technology. Right, right. And, and like, in terms of, uh, of like, uh, getting, like, Social Security money and, and stuff like that, you know, like, so I've been fighting for disability for, for uh, like, the last four years because I, I developed epilepsy in 2018. And it's it's been an absolute joke, and it, it, it takes so fucking long, right? And so there's a lot of positives I feel like that can come of it, but then it's like uh, exactly what you were just saying. Like, is it, how's it going to be ran? Like, is it going to be ran on like their own nodes, or and they're making more and more and more money? You know how how would that all work? But um, and I don't, I, I don't know all all the answers, but I feel like. Uh, we could definitely be more efficient, you know. I mean, when it takes four months to get a letter back, you know, of, of waiting with without the ability to work and, and or drive or anything like that, it's it's just it's a mess the way that it is, and, and the dollar's going to shit too. And I don't know about where you guys are, but uh, I, I'm in Utah, and they just barely. So I have a lot of siblings that that own construction companies. They just halted all new construct uh, residential construction neighborhoods and projects so they completely shut them down and uh, my, my brother had to lay off like 60 50 60 guys damn man that sucks sorry to hear that damn um, well, well but they're funneling they're just focusing and funneling money into uh, like more apartment style and, and uh, what do they call it multi multi family housing I want to say yeah they're going to build more townhomes and apartments and condos and shit more than single family homes yes yeah yep. they're already starting that in California they've already started here I mean it, it's crazy like if you want a house here like rent is, is close to three grand a month yeah that's you will that's own nothing things. and be happy sorry taco yeah Oh yeah! Oh no! That's no. yeah. <laughs> the thing. That the Klaus thing got ex- destroyed a few months back, or struck by lightning or something. Um, the uh, oh, what is it? Oh damn! Hold on, let me look it up. I just want to also say, "What's up, my boy Xander?" What's up, honey? Oh, you know, just strutting around like I'm 12 feet tall, slinging out because I was right about last night. <laughs> you got that. I, were you right or just did no one say you were wrong? Well, no one said I was wrong, so I was right. Okay. Uh-oh. Hey, take those wins where you can. <laughs> That's the KDAW. Oh yeah, so so it was a, a, a 
said it's a replica of Stonehenge, right? That that said that uh, they had it carved in like you own nothing, you'll be happy. The Earth's population will be blah 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 blah. I, I believe it was in Georgia, and it exploded um, a couple of months back. Because they have those like kind of all, uh, all over the world, I believe, in several different locations, like a mini Stonehenge. I got you. Hey, I do have a question for on the block. I see that you are hashtag Raven. I love me some Raven coin. Can you uh, tell me what you do with it or what your part is? Or are you just avid person on it? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I've been with, uh, um, or, you know, helping Raven for a couple of years. I mean, just investor NFTs and all that. Uh, Crypto Lisa is the CM, uh, chief marketing officer for Ravenist uh, and just NFTs. But yeah, Raven coins a, a good coin, man. Like it, it's there's no ICO, no pre mine. It was fair launched and it's fairly reasonable right now at around three cents and. You know, we're ramping up uh, marketing. I know uh, Crypto Lisa is, and, and so am I, and, and Ravencoin. So hopefully we'll we'll get everything moving in the right direction to get more people knowing about it. I've been mining your coin for several years now, but I have one gripe with you, the whole project. The only fucking gripe I have with Raven, the only gripe, is the goddamn wallet. Yeah, which wallet are you talking about? I'll tell you. Hold on. What is it? Is it poor? Raven Wallet. It's uh, blue and orange with the white. Oh, yeah. The iOS one? I have an Android. Okay. Yeah, phone. you got the... the, um, the uh, it, it, what you want to do is go to Mango Farms Assets. He's got me blocked, so... <laughs> so I can't, I, I can't look him up on Twitter, but it's Mango... Like the fruit farm okay. assets, you'll love that wallet. Okay, because dude, I have been leaving my Raven on the exchange on Binance. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have, but I just was like, you know what? I would rather leave it on Binance than fucking deal with it in that wallet because I've tried leaving that wallet open and it does nothing. <laughs> Yeah, Mango Farms uh, assets. Can you send it to him, Crypto Lisa? I found it. It's all good. Yeah. All right. So the the wallets suck. The 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 app wallets they suck. Yeah, you so love like, uh, Mango Farms. Right on. I'll check it out. So, like, what more developments going on in Raven? Because I haven't seen too much going on. I mean, the big thing with Ravencoin, I think, is, is um, it, you know, it, I mean, it, Ravencoin basically, it all revolves around the NFTs. And the problem is, is people don't know about it. It's just, you know, you got Ravenist and just NFTs and Crypto Lisa, um, you know, pushing, you know, trying to, you know, bring people in. But it, like, some people get jealous and in like other marketplaces and, and it's like, it, you know, it's just all negative. So like, I'm, I'm just choosing to focus on helping Ravenist and crypto Lisa and Ravencoin because it's just, I'm, I'm tired of dealing with negative people. Does that make sense? I agree. I understand. Like, look, I'm a bag holder of Raven. I, I, I have my fair share. I have a good little stack. So I, I like it. I'm a proof of work guy. I only fuck with proof of work. I hate proof of stake. It's going it, to, to be honest with you, it's going to get there because we're working oh, absolutely. on absolutely. Yeah, we're working on a project right now. And, it, you know, like, I don't know why people, you know, are, are like that or whatever. But, like, if someone is doing good on, on like, say, Ravenist or, or uh, just NFTs with, and, it, you know, Crypto Lisa, then they talk about her. And it, it's just like, I'm done with all that. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 you know, the thing is, is, the is smooth she, brain NPCs. I got you. Yeah. And, and, the, but the thing is, is, is we are working on the marketing and stuff. So like, I, I really think it's going to move in the next couple months because, you know, we're ramping up our followers and, and, 
it, you know, the thing is, is with the, it, you know, Raven coin is just decentralized. You know I mean? It's kind of like Bitcoin where here it is, here's a platform and you guys run it or do whatever you want with it. Well, the problem is, is unlike, it, you know, say like Ether coins that had a bunch of ICO money that they pushed, you know, marketing, marketing, marketing. I think that's what Ravencoin was missing, and that's that's what we're trying to fix. Is is because the Ravencoin Twitter handle doesn't really tweet like what's going on, so people don't know. So what we're doing is, and you know, trying to ramp up followers just to bring more people into everything within the ecosystem, it, like Ravenous, just NFTs. Uh, but there's a lot going on. Like they got like. Um, uh, it, you know, several companies that are tokenized in real estate on Ravencoin. It's just, it's all marketing, man. Ravencoin's better than a lot of coins, but it's just market. It didn't have the marketing. I agree tenfold. Like that's the best part is the projects that are quote unquote shitty on marketing, but they have a really good value. It's a, it's like the, it, you know, I'll put it to you like this. It's like the best looking girl at say at, um, it's your high school dance, okay? She's the best-looking girl, but she's sitting in the corner, okay, in a dark corner, and nobody can see her, and she's not getting the attention because nobody's seeing her. It's the same same thing. I, I, w- I would date the, the girl sitting in the corner. Bro, I'm sure you would date anything that has a vagine. Uh, I, no, I would not. So you'll take dick? Nope. <laughs> That's not what you just said. Uh, <laughs> I got you, bitch. I, uh, I, I got you. It's all good. I'm just fucking with you. I love. I love you. Hey, Sander, what's and, what's going up? Uh, what's going on with your project going on? Uh, real quick on the block before Xander, before you come up, we got rancid with their hand up. Oh, sorry. I was uh, I was actually just reading the messages. I just um, I sent sent a message out to to some of you for me too. But but no, I I've, I've known people that have uh, mined Ravencoin, and I've been interested in it. I was just wondering what uh, what all it, it is entailed with that, and and help and what's the profitability on it at at this point. Well, I'm not too much into mining, but like um, on Twitter, I. I, I yeah, this is uh, the man said. Yeah, I'll I'll DM you the um, the name of the guy you want to talk to, and you know if, if you want to run a Ravencoin node or, or mining and stuff, and he can answer your questions. I'm more like on, okay. on the marketing. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just uh, I just show you a photo. I can speak on the uh, mining side because I currently am mining it. Um, it's actually dog shit profitable right now. And there's really nothing that's profitable. The only thing that's actually technically profitable at this very moment on GPU mining is Firo, And I wouldn't touch Firo. Um, yeah. It's just the market is just not good in GPUs. There's a few reasons why um, all the miners that were mining Ethereum dispersed. And it's pretty much an arms race with mining. And it's all of who has the best, latest, and greatest equipment. And the 4090s came out, and it really kind of hit the market. And nothing's really profitable because the market is down. So there's just so much combo. Like right here, right now, if you had the equipment... Yeah, mine it. Um, if you were saying, okay, I want to get into Raven or any of the other proof of works, I would say right here, right now, not financial advice, but it would be more advantageous to purchase the coins rather than the actual equipment. At right, this very right. moment. Yeah. Uh, so say, say uh, you've got the equipment and, and you can really like it. Cause my, I guess my, my line of thinking is, um, like, if it's sustainable, if it's not crazy outrageous, like uh, to to run right, then, My, uh, then you might as well like be collecting and stacking up the the small. I'll tell you this: Raven okay. is the most expensive one to mine. It draws the most power. Okay, interesting. Um, the algorithm is very extensive, and this is the only great. 
I have on the mining side with Raven and it's going to be harder for Raven to adopt on mining standards because of how quote unquote inefficient it is. Compared to other algos out there, it's just a hard sell to those to those environmentalists. For me, it doesn't fucking matter because at the end of the day, it's energy. Like, why why should we be so hell bent on not using energy? Yeah, I mean, somebody's going to use it somewhere, right? <laughs> Absolutely, everybody's using so much energy. It's, it's crazy. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. No worries. It's it's definitely a good project. I wish there was more development. I wanted to talk to you on the block about the real estate because I've actually gone through this with some of my properties. I've tried to tokenize them, and I've learned that it's extremely difficult to tokenize and that the government's just it's just so expensive to do it. Are you just referring to that one chick that made like a YouTube video about her house that she made into an NFT? No, I, I, um, I'm talking about like blockchain Sarah and Bricks. Um, they're they're actively going to be tokenizing real estate, like s selling, you know, shares of um, a property as you know NFT, not as NFTs, but just to represent that you own this amount. And I can DM you her uh, information; she could tell you more about it than I am. Please do, because I have some properties right now that I would absolutely love to tokenize. Yeah, Let's no problem. To, uh, Wait. Uh, DigiShares. DigiShares will help you tokenize. Not only yeah, DigiShares, pro, uh, Proppy. And then, I talked uh, to them, and they, they were not nice. Dude, I know somebody that can help you code and do everything you need to do on the back end, back end too. I can do exactly what you want to do because like there is other projects um there's even apartment projects on, on open sea and stuff where you can buy like I think just a few square feet of, of an apartment as an nft for residual income but but i think i know a, a person that would, that would be able to answer that for i you. have them I listed know. at this very moment um if they don't sell i am definitely going to do it i've had them for like a few years now um, I own them. Wait, out. Bill, this is a call for this is a call for another day. Then, or the, this is a call for later on. I want to know more about yeah, what. Yeah, like, well, let's do it, and we'll get my my boy Byte in here. Uh, <clears throat> Byte Storage. He's he's uh, been one of the creators of, of Arc Arc Block, um, <clears throat> using I, uh, DID. So he's definitely <clears throat> he's super knowledgeable, and he just. Uh, just helped us out. He just started joining my spaces and stuff and started coming around and uh, we become pretty good friends. He's from Denver. So we're going to be meeting up with him out there in Denver, um, at, at Denver. But, uh, but yeah, he did a class with a bunch of us, I think uh, like 12 or 13 of us and, and set up to, like all the coding and everything um, to be able to, to, East Denver is going to be amazing. Oh, sorry, Ray. I, I can't. Yeah. I'll be out there, Rand said, hey, around the 23rd. Yeah. Awesome, man. I'm making T-shirts right now. I'm trying to get um, some funding. Like, if you guys know any projects or anything that want to be sponsored, like, I'm happy to put their logo or whatever on the T-shirts. There's just five of us that are, are, are going out, but I, I'm just trying to get enough people to, to, to throw down a few bucks here and there. I do, like, 20 bucks a T-shirt. Um trying to fill those spots and, and make, make some shirts uh, representing different projects and, and that. Definitely. Uh, I might know a few, so let's let's talk over the next couple of days. Uh, FYI, I am a large. All right, dude. I'll, I can I can design one for you for sure. I've got, um, I've got several already, so, I mean, I, I'm not trying to make any money off of it or anything. It's just simply that like, it was an idea I had to, to rip our dot ETH, right? Like, so everybody has their own dot ETH name um, with a friend of ours that has a, a project that he makes out of emojis um, on their dot ETH names, but it's, it's, uh, he makes them out of emojis and it's, it's a, a, like a punk or he made me a killer bear. Uh, it's, it's a really cool concept and it's something that nobody has done before. So, um, 
yeah, yeah, just want to support and, and get all the support we can. We're, we're going to be doing some giveaways, too. If you guys know anybody that would be down to throw in on giveaways, we'll match it. Uh, but, yeah. Amazing. Bring it cool. to the yeah, no. uh, Zeno has an invite, so yes. I want to talk to you, Zeno. Zeno's got an invite to, to, to what? To East Denver? But oh, uh, and before I forget, Rancid, I I sent you the 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 pitch deck for uh, Supermoon Tower, so we're hosting uh, the event there, um, in congruent like the days leading up to ETH Denver. So we have the entire clock tower. What what are the dates for? That? I did see that come through, but I haven't looked into uh, what what are the uh, dates for that? Because I'll be there from the second to the sixth. Um. That will be oh yeah, let's see here. Um Supermoon itself will be going um from I think the first to the third. Oh sweet. Eleven hours each day. So um expecting around two thousand total people. Um depending but it is it is it actually already got on um Hacker Noon got labeled as one of the top five events to hit while at East Denver. Oh, dude, that's awesome. That's huge. So, yeah, and, and I, I uh, got a couple of the names that, that you had sent me. I reached out to them. But if you – yeah, if there's anything that you can do to assist to get January Walker, um, like, some stage time out there, then we can get her out there as well because uh, that's somebody I really support and stand behind. And, and uh, yeah, I think I think it would be very beneficial – for, for the entire community. If we could yeah, I remember I remember when she first started hopping into Twitter spaces last year, and uh, she uh, came up uh, during, um, we were talking about in uh, Hello Morgan space, uh, on-chain, about uh, TK uh, 10,000, um, and um, all of that stuff that was going on. And so she had a bunch of questions and, and that was sort of cool to see her do that. And then I started seeing her in more spaces and, and asking questions and stuff. What was hilarious is I had a booth on the wall opposite of her at Cardano NFT, CNFT. So I didn't even know she was there till like the night last night type of thing. And so I was like, I, I missed out, missed out on that with her meeting her in person. Oh. So crazy so. yeah i man i i have mad respect for, for her like like i was saying in the space earlier uh we're from the same town and so it's really encouraging to see somebody from from my hometown you know uh working as hard as she works and grinding as hard as she works and pushing for blockchain and, and just like she's younger you know like if we really want to make a change man and anything that's going on right now we got to get these old uh uh, Tales of the Crypt motherfuckers out of office that should have died a long time ago. We need to get some new blood and, and, and some new ideas, some new brains, some new ways of doing things, you know, in there. And the longer we let it go, the worse it's just going to get. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's good to see when people take, you know, politicians and uh, like you, you had the other gentleman that's running for going to be running for president in the space you know those are those are the moments to remember you know yeah and anthony hudson yeah for sure um, yep. i'm gonna have him on my space too i i booked out for a couple of weeks so it'll probably be into march i'm guessing because after denver and everything but um but yeah i definitely plan to have him in the space too because i think it's i think it's something that needs to be talked about right it's like we gotta open dialogue and make make people aware you know what's going on and where we want our future and what we want for our, our kids you know i don't know about you guys but, but i'm a parent and I, I want the best for, for my kid and, and for myself you know and for everybody else so awesome yeah it'll be cool to see um you know especially how they they push forward with that so uh, i'm happy to see that moving forward you know um Richard, uh, welcome up. Welcome up. 
And, you know, as always, I want to say thank you so much for coming. Uh, you mute, you're, you're rugging a little bit there. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you said, uh, hello, I love you, Taco. It's pretty much what I think you said. I heard it too. Yeah. Um, so Xander, closing words of the night. Thoughts on today? SEC proof of work. What's up, Taco? Xander, closing closing words of the night. Richard, you're still rugging really bad. But Xander, closing words. Well, I am heavy into proof of work. I am a minor, so I am biased. But I will continue to support the networks and definitely uh, build towards the future. All right. Xander, I'm on minor also. Nice. Uh, on the blocks, closing thoughts. Just keep pushing. All right. Lissa, 10 seconds, words of wisdom. Get yourself all the exchanges and keep pushing forward. And proof of work is great, but I'm always blockchain agnostic. <laughs> All right. Rancid. Yeah, uh, real fast, I just want to do to shout out my boy THC that, that jumped in to join us uh, here for, for the last little bit of the show. And thank you for inviting me in and, and for the hospitality and stuff. I'll definitely be in contact with you, man. We'll have to meet out or meet up out in Denver. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and THA, THC, thank you for, for, for joining. You know, I had sent you an invite. Uh, not everyone can always join. I understand that. So there's no uh, no harsh times. Uh, hopefully next time you're able to join us. Phil, final thoughts, words of wisdom. <laughs> proof of stake, a fucking scam. Proof of work will be the next fucking bull run, boy. Let's go. <laughs> and AI coins. Um as always, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. And I end this with, you know, you spell steak, S-T-E-A-K, not S-T. How else did Gary spell it? I hated that video so much. I know. I just, I'm, I, I just, yeah, I can't. I wanted to, like, do a song on that, and I can't. So my final words of wisdom, closed mouth cannot be fed, and you cannot feed a closed mouth. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight on episode 176 of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen. Um, and with that, whoever is the best to help me with the best joke on the face of the planet, knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> <laughs>